Hello and welcome back to Byron's Adventures. Now, I have seen your comments, uh, as I always do, but this in particular has been something that I have been wanting to do very much, and that is to hire a mercenary company. And so I am actually going to be doing that. These guys literally just left the uh, Azurai, and I just managed to see the leader. And, well, as you can see, he's actually offering us 520 dinars in exchange for every influence we gain for you. I am perfectly happy to accept that. And there you go. So the forest people are now going to be fighting alongside us, which is absolutely fantastic. And bear in mind that we have also now taken... Uh, <laughs> I think we've taken this back uh, rather than anything else. Okay, so Garios is going to be getting this, as you can see. Mm, that seems to make more sense, so let's do that. There we go, and uh, we'll see what happens. Now, I've been doing a couple of auto-resolve battles, nothing really dramatic or anything like that, uh, but I must mention that Phikaeon is actually under siege as we speak. So when that inevitably gets taken by Ingaltha, I will literally only have one thief under my control or under byron's control shall we say oh garvey i want to speak to you sir hello hello S stop stop in the name of the law criminal scum thank you all right so yeah we're going to be speaking to him and we'll see if we can uh let's have a look here mm, yes ah i was actually hoping that i could persuade him or attempt to persuade him again but obviously no such luck so I guess I will just go in for the auto-resolve, inevitably winning this battle, and uh, we will let him go. Uh, amusingly enough, we actually have a hundred relation with the company of the Golden Boar, and yet I am still not able to persuade them. That is also something that I, I should definitely mention. Even though I have a mod that reduces the chances of them defecting, bear in mind that obviously before, in my opinion, it's just, it's completely broken, the mechanics. I mean, it, you know, people, you know, you spend a million on this guy and then he ends up leaving and backstabbing you the next second. I think that's way too, way too harsh. But the point is, is that you've got to also remember that even though it does reduce the chances of them defecting, I also have an extremely low chance of even persuading them to begin with. So, you know, <laughs> there's a whole wide variety of different things stacked against us at the moment. Not only the fact that the Kuzeta are absolutely destroying every single thief that they come up against right now, and it is making things very difficult for us indeed. But anyway, let's just take a quick look at my forces here. I, I don't know why I have Azurai recruits and things like that in my army at the moment. I feel like I should really do something about that. Like, you just put them into a garrison nearby or something. I think they were just rescued i think they were rescued prisoners or something because i don't think i would keep them in my army otherwise so yeah anyway basically i've just been shadowing unkid's army i believe he actually took medini castle yes he did but that is being now taken back by one of our uh one of our vassals i think lucon is actually taking that back so hopefully we'll be able to give that to him if he needs it because obviously do bear in mind that we actually have uh, a town over here somewhere? Yeah, Saniopa we actually also have, because Lucon is the uh, the lord of that town. But, uh, oh, wait a minute. Phikaeon is not actually under siege. It seems like um, Ingaltha stopped the siege because he was worried that he was going to be defeated or weakened too much. Mm, very interesting. Okay, so this guy is obviously going to be heading on over to the castle here. And this is exactly what we want. We want him to waste his time as much as we possibly can. And I will be staying in the garrison if he comes close. Because that's going to prevent him from doing anything. Who's that over there? Someone's having a bit of an issue. Safia is having some problems against looters for some reason. I have given all of my parties extremely powerful units. And this is what has happened to them. Look at Barney's party right here. Barney is running around with basically nothing. So I'm actually going to disband his party right now. And as you can see, Sophia has not been doing very well either. She has lost basically half her army. And I have no idea how. I have no idea how that was a thing because she was moving. Oh, well, I guess she did actually attempt to take castles and things. Oh, and look at this. We've actually taken another castle here too, which is actually quite nice. Let's give it to this guy, I guess. And uh, we'll just uh, you know continue to go with the majority, I suppose. And uh, we'll see what happens with that because um 
we need to keep everyone happy because bear in mind that even though I do have a mod that makes it easier for the defections not to happen, they can still happen. It's not impossible for them to leave. They can still happen if their relation does dip a little bit. So we should be a bit careful about it. Anyway, let's go in here and we're going to wait here for some time. As you can see, we're kind of just playing a little bit of ping pong with this guy at the moment because he's just ping ponging back and forth, back and forth. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Pretty happy with that because we really don't want him to uh, besiege this without us actually being inside. And oh, look at that. Yoon of the forest people has been taken prisoner by desert bandits. Well, that's not very good, is it? No, that is not very good at all. And look at this. There you go. The owner of Medini Castle, once again. So Krotor is going to be getting this, apparently. And um, Lucon, I believe, took it. So I guess I just couldn't give it to him because he already owns something. I believe he owns this. Yeah, so he's doing pretty well in terms of his prosperity, which I suppose is perfectly fine. And we should probably take a look at our clans as well. So this is who we currently have in our... Um, in our in our control or un under our command, I guess you could say. Now, let's actually just take a quick look here. I'm going to give Lucon's clan a huge amount of influence because I would like him to create a massive army so that he can just run around with hopefully near to a thousand units and just go on a massive sieging spree if he can actually do that. Because obviously, uh, I don't know whether you've noticed, um, maybe I haven't shown you yet, but in Sanala, the garrison is, well, kind of out of this world. It is very, very tough. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to take it, as you can see. 2,500. <laughs> yes, exactly. It is uh, kind of ludicrous. Okay, let's have a look here now. Wait a minute. Okay, we are, oh, we actually do have an army already. But it's only consisting of four people, so it shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully, Lucon will make his own army relatively soon, and then that will work out quite nicely. Okay, so this guy's going to go back and forth between these two castles now, isn't he? Yes. Barney has been captured by looters. Well, that's obviously not very good, is it? Now, I'm thinking, shall we just go in against this guy? He's got 122. He's got veteran oath keepers. I don't really want to deal with veteran oath keepers. To be honest, I mean, I want Carith, you see. I want Carith to um, to leave the army. So I guess we'll just bide our time and see what we can do. Well, it seems like we're actually going to go in here against Unkid's army because Komar decided that it would be a good idea to do so. And I'm a bit worried about that now because as you can quite clearly see, uh, Komar, what does he actually have? Oh, he's actually got some pretty decent units. Um... <laughs> <laughs> maybe not so maybe not so decent but he's got some okay units and we're going to be going up against a massive massive army here so i'm i mean it's not obviously not as massive as what we have fought in the past but you've got to remember that we don't have as many really high tier units any further so this is going to be kind of interesting anyway let's get our people into shield wall loose, loose formations and so on and then we'll get these other guys to follow me we're going to actually get these cavalry and horse archers to follow me we're going to do a, a couple of maneuvers here usually i don't like to do this because i trust in the ai to do what they do best and that's pretty much it but i'm uh, kind of wanting them to come over here and uh, try and hopefully eliminate the enemy cavalry a little bit before we actually go into the main bulk of the enemy forces because those guys mm, they're going to be pretty damaging they're going to be pretty damaging i'm hopeful that uh, we can uh, kill a couple it seems like we are not really killing that many at all as you can see I'm gonna have to move my archers forward a little bit and let's hope that we can maybe do some really really devastating charge maneuver because we just have so many oh hello we just have so many cavalry that it makes all the sense in the world. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, that was one of the lords. Pretty funny. But anyway, yeah. It just makes all the sense in the world for us to um, try and do something like this. Ah, it seems like we're, we're actually getting picked off a little bit here. Not a big fan of that, got to say. Not a big fan of that. And it seems like some of them are actually behind us as well. Oh, decent damage, but not a kill. Okay, we're going to have to tell these guys to charge in, I suppose. And we're going to have to, you know, charge our uh, forces in against 
the enemy's archers. These guys do so much damage. I really wish I did more damage here. Oh no. That is... Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, never mind, never mind. We are fine. Ah, oh, nice. That was a nice hit. Oh, that was good too. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, so we basically just have to charge in. Let's charge our infantry in as well to try and assist our cavalry as much as we possibly can. Oh, nice. Pinpoint strike right there. Nice. Another one. Okay. Uh, we're doing we're doing pretty nicely with our spear at the moment. I'm actually kind of surprised that I'm getting so many kills with it because usually uh, what happens is I try to go in, I, you know, poke around a little bit and uh, then I end up getting myself killed through being lanced in the face or something and uh, yeah, that's generally how my battle experience goes. But uh, this time around we actually seem to be surviving for a pretty... Okay. <laughs> Did I call my own number? Did I call my own number ahead of time? Yes, I think I might have. Yeah, that was uh, that was kind of jinxing myself. Mm, a little bit uh, kind of tempting fate, shall we say. Yeah, it's definitely tempting fate. Okay, I'm going to tell my archers to charge in now as well so that they can get into effective range if they need to. And hopefully we will be victorious. It seems like we will be victorious, but it really just will take us a bit of extra time. And indeed, more bodies. More bodies will have to be price of victory here and uh, do bear in mind as well by the way that I am playing on exactly the same difficulty settings that I was at the very start of the series which means everything on realistic everything at max including um, I think I what, what, what was I what was the combat AI on I actually can't remember I think it was on challenging wasn't it on challenging wasn't that like the highest or something I'm not entirely sure what I put it on at the time but yeah, you can basically rest assured that... Oh, that was close. You can basically rest assured that I am playing on the highest settings possible. And uh, the, the reason why we're winning these battles is either... And I'm not saying that my tactics are any good. But generally, tactics and strategy. That obviously plays a, a small part. Because the AI sometimes is not exactly great at countering various maneuvers. But let's just say that one of those, you know, one of those things is definitely going to help a little bit. And then obviously the caliber of unit. Generally in Mountain Blade, the caliber of your units, the, the rank of your units are the main reason why you'll win or lose a battle. Like for example, if I just had 150 recruits out of 200, then obviously I'd lose more battles than if I had 150 high tier units. I mean, that's just the way of things. However, here's Karath. Hello. I will let you go, sir, and you will be rejoining us very soon. Don't worry. Okay, so this guy, yeah, I'm just going to let him go as well. I'm going to try and let a lot of people go here. Apart from this guy, I'm going to keep Unkid because I don't want him to lead another um, massive army against us, if at all possible. I'd like to try and prevent that from happening too soon. Uh, but obviously, he's going to probably escape relatively quickly anyway. So can't really prevent that from happening, unfortunately. Okay, so there we go. I'm uh, still just taking all of the cavalry that I can, pretty much. All right, there we go. Nice. Okay, so we have kind of stabilized our situation a little bit. And all I need to do is now speak to Karith as soon as I possibly can. And who's that guy? I believe that guy is actually part of Karith's... Um, Kareth's clan, so I would like to be able to speak to him, if at all possible, and literally just defeat him, and then just release him, straight up, because I would like to gain, oh no, it's actually not him, it's actually, Who, who's he a part of? Ah, he's a part of this guy, oh okay, well that's actually pretty good, because that means that uh, gaining some relation with their clan might actually help us in the long run, because obviously we would like to try and persuade them, so gaining a little bit of relation here and there might help to contribute to something like that. But yeah, obviously uh, the, uh, the other fellow has proven to be quite difficult to persuade in the past. So that might be uh, somewhat problematic. Anyway, let's take a look at our fish here. I've actually already sold a whole bunch of stuff here. Let's buy some fish. Yeah, but now bear in mind, I am having some difficulties with my money situation. And uh, someone pointed out in the comments that, yeah, I am definitely having some problems with that, mainly because all of my land has been taken. 
that's literally the only reason I'm pretty sure. And let's have a look. Okay, so Incurion is actually the leader of this guy's army. But we're going to just go in for an auto-resolve right here. And we're just going to let him go because we're going to try and get as much relation with these guys as we can. As you can see, we already have 89 with him because he was actually a part of our faction previously. And I was able to spend some influence to uh, kind of butter him up a little bit. So I'm hopeful that what will happen now is that uh, Karith will come out with a very small army. There's Garvey again. I wonder whether I'll be able to actually speak to Garvey now and maybe try to persuade him again. There's Talas as well. Talas, I believe, is also someone that I could potentially uh, recruit. So let's try and see if I can do that. Hello, sir. I believe uh, he is the leader of a clan tier 6, and that is someone very difficult to get. As you can see, 50% chance. I'm going to have to get 4 out of 4. Very lucky here. And even if, this is the thing, even if I'm able to get him, which, as you can see, is actually not going to happen, but even if I was able to persuade him, um, he would ask me for a lot of money, and I don't have any money. So, I guess I'll just take him down. <laughs> I guess I'll just take him down. And uh, then what we'll do is we'll let him go again. And uh, look at that. We got, we got 10,000 gold. That's pretty good. Let's let him go for a little bit of extra relation increase. Because you never know. Maybe the relation increase is actually going to help. Um, as we go forward and maybe try to persuade him again. It might, might help us. I, I don't really know about that, to be honest. Don't know how big a part the uh, relation actually plays let's see is Karath actually in here no uh, there's that other fellow which we might want to try and persuade uh, mm. I'm gonna have to go back to my town as well because I do need to sell uh, I should probably go to one of the other towns nearby actually as well because they probably have a whole bunch of money in their marketplace and I'm just sitting on a huge amount of loot now oh, there's Garvey okay Let's try and get him, shall we? Let's try and get him. Okay, come on. Come on, sir. Uh, uh, where, where's Karath? I really want Karath to appear so that we can actually get him back. That would be so nice. Okay, so let's have a look. Oh, wow, really? He, he's, he, he really doesn't want to be persuaded. I wonder what the cooldown is on that because I'm actually not sure. It has uh, never happened where I have been in a situation where I've had the ability to speak to the same guy again and again and again and um, he's just refusing to speak to us so yeah it's kind of kind of weird oh well never mind okay who's that uh, that's that guy okay so let's try and go up to that guy he is the leader of a tier 4 clan so he has in my opinion more of a likely chance for uh, joining us than the uh, tier 6 guys. The tier 6 guys seem to be kind of difficult because they might be a bit snooty. They might be like, oh, well, I'm too good to join your faction. You know, that kind of thing. So we might try to do this. Ah, mm, we've already persuaded him once. And as you can see, uh, he will not join us because he just needs a huge amount of money. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Yeah, so that, that, that happened before. So let's just auto-resolve real quick, get him out the way, and we'll let him go. Just purely for relation increase. Maybe if we get a positive relation with him, he might decide to waive the cost of him joining. Uh, crossing fingers, you know, crossing fingers about that. Maybe maybe he will decide to do that. But if he doesn't, then it's not so big a loss, even though it would be wonderful for him to join us because I think he actually owns... Doesn't he own uh, Sanala? I'm actually not sure who owns that. Let me actually have a look. It's probably Unkid, right? Yeah, <laughs> of course it's unkid. Uh, who would have who would have expected any less, right? Who would have expected any less? Okay. Oh, Arenakos. Hello. Arenakos is actually the leader of this particular mercenary band, and I would love to be able to get him to join us. So if I can just chase after him a little bit here, I'm moving at five point eight, and he's moving at five point six. Whoa, he's fast. He's fast for having such a medium-sized army. That's kind of weird. Okay, well, could you uh, could you slow down a little bit, sir? I'm kind of old now, you know. Byron's kind of old, and he's um, not as young as he used to be. Okay, so let's have a look here. Uh, 
can you join me? Yes, yes, join us. There we go. Okay, so he's going to join now. And that has made us significantly more powerful, which is great. Okay, so I'm actually going to take a look here. Borvold, yeah, he's he's obviously not the leader of the uh, Golden Boar. I believe it's Garvey. Yeah, Garvey does not want to join me for some reason. Kind of weird. I guess it's because I failed the persuasion. Oh, I should really help him. Oh, never mind. He's absolutely beasting him. No problem at all. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Okay, so we've got some decent armies up and running. Oh, and it seems like we've made peace with the Kuzate. I didn't even realize. Well, that's kind of interesting. Okay, yeah, so we made peace with them. So let's go into the trade screen now because I actually want to show you just how much money I can make. I'm actually going to buy these war horses over here as well, even though they're 8,000. I'm going to buy them anyway just for the sheer fact that I can show you this. So let's see what happens here. This is exactly the reason why. I also want to go into the uh, foodstuffs as well and uh, see what I can do about that. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to sell all of my weapons at once because it's probably going to then bankrupt the town and I don't really want to do that because bankrupting it, I believe, does have a negative effect on a variety of different things. You know, they can't buy things. Oh, like, like, oh it actually seems like we can give away all of our weapons. Oh, well, okay. I was a little bit... Uh, not really knowing what the hell was going on there by the looks of things. Okay, so yeah, anyway, let's just sell a little bit more then. And there we go. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to do. Another 57,000, which I think is going to keep us afloat for a little bit longer, you know, just a little bit. And now we're going to try and hunt down where Karath is. Oh, there he is. Perfect. Karath, don't get killed by that army, please. I would like to speak to you as soon as humanly possible. And I'm actually going to be disbanding Barney's party. I'm not entirely sure why he's still a party at the moment. But anyway. Uh, where, where's Karath? Where, where, where's Karath gone? There's Talas once again. Yeah, okay. Did he go in here? Yeah, Karath is actually in... Oh no, he's in Kasira and now he's trying to besiege this. So Rook, what are you doing, sir? I mean, I know you mean well, but uh, I could... I can, wait, wait, can I, can I actually tell him to not do this? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. I can't actually tell him where to go. Ah, uh, that is slightly problematic. I, I mean, we could just take it, I guess, and then we could persuade Karath after that, but the thing is, is that I don't know whether that's going to happen. I'm, I'm just going to leave him to his own devices, and if he decides not to do that then i suppose that is absolutely fine okay wait who's this who are these guys over here uh, okay yeah nothing nothing really 2300 i think if we can consolidate ourselves and uh you know maybe uh, you know what i'm actually just going to go back into the garrison back here and uh see what i can do it seems like we're being taken prisoner by the vlandians a huge amount hmm that's problematic. All right, so we're in a uh, rather interesting situation here. I've been running around just basically doing auto-resolves against every single Azurai vassal that I can get my hands on because obviously I want to try and keep them as weak as I possibly can so that we can potentially focus our main strengths on defending against the Vlandians. And as you can see, they're actually coming in here with a pretty damaging... Ooh, a pretty damaging army. I'm actually having a look at who we have in the army here. And I'm not going to be able to persuade Servic. We've seen that. He is... Mm, he's just too, too stubborn. Way too stubborn. So we're not going to be able to get him. However, I might be able to get Belgia or Hecard. But because they are Vlandians, they are generally kind of... I don't really know what kind of word to use to describe them, but they're kind of dramatic. They tend to bring a lot of baggage with them, and it's very difficult to really uh, keep them happy, I guess you could say. Their, their happiness is very difficult to maintain. Mm. Hello there. <laughs> That's another very large army. Very nice. Okay, um, wait a minute. Okay, so yeah, they're actually... At war against us, aren't they? I, I actually don't know. Are they are they at war against each other or are they just at war against me? Because it seems like they're just at war against me at this point. 
As you can see, the Azurai have literally no strength whatsoever. But if I can get Karath to join us, I still haven't been able to talk to him, by the way, because um, yeah, Kassira is still under... No, it's not under siege anymore. So I could potentially try and find Karath now, but we're in a uh, bit of a tricky situation because I'd like to be able to attack Servic and potentially speak to some of his people. And as you can see, he is actually without any food. And they are very far away from any friendly town. So this is actually very good for us because that means that I might very well be able to prey upon him when they disband, when they lose cohesion. Or I can just attack them straight up. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Ah, there we go. There we go. Okay. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. This is great. Very nice to see this. Okay. So let's see. Uh... I, you know, I could probably I could probably take this guy down now, but I kind of wanted to wait until more of them left to do that. Can I speak to him without getting the big army involved? Maybe. Nope, he's going to run back into them. Now, here's the thing. Yeah, now they're all splitting off. So this is going to be a little bit easier, but also d more difficult for me. Because I'd like to get Heckard, potentially. Let's actually just take a quick look here. Heckard. Okay, so Heckard is the leader, and it is a tier 5 clan, so we might very well be able to get him for no money. And Morkon we're not going to get. Belgir is going to be insanely difficult to get. Belgir is one of those stubborn guys that requires a huge amount of money. I think he's one of the guys that actually backstabbed us in the, uh, in the past, and uh, yeah, he might very well be kind of hard. So let's see what we can do. Shall we speak to him? Let's try and split them. Divide and conquer. That is the uh, the name of the game. And we'll try and speak to him. And see what we can do. Alright, okay. i never ever lucky with this, but we're going to try it. Nope. As you can see. 68% chance. I mean, I could have gone for the 50%, but I feel like 50% is just way too difficult. Yeah, this guy's never going to join us. But we could just auto resolve against him, or we could just go... Wow. Hugely, hugely impossible to get this guy. So I guess I'm just going to attack him, because he's more than likely has a, a lot of money. And I could auto resolve here. Do I want to auto resolve? Let's actually just take a quick look. What does he have? He has a number of vanguards and things. That might be kind of problematic for us. You know what? Let's just auto-resolve and see what happens. No, absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. I should not have worried at all. Um, and there you go. So now we can let him go too. Um, letting him go might have not been the best idea. But, you know, I'm, I'm basically just trying to make it so that if we do come across him in the future and we have a... A decent relation with him. As I've said, I'm not entirely sure how impactful the relation actually is. Because obviously it is very impactful in terms of recruiting things from villages. Recruiting troops from villages does make a big difference in regards to that. But uh, otherwise, maybe not so much. Okay, so Hecard is our next stop. Let's see if we can speak to him. Morcon might actually be someone as well. But I think yeah, there's actually two Morcons, hilariously enough. Yeah, so he, I believe, yeah, he is actually the son of Death Art. So who's Morcan then? Because Morcan is someone else. Ah, he's the son of Ingalfa. Okay. <laughs> not entirely sure why they have such similar names, but okay. Anyway, so we're not going to be talking to Morcon because he's never going to betray his father. And the other guy is impossible, in my opinion, to get. So we'll try Hecard. Uh, we, we have a good relation with this guy. Okay, let's have a look. Right, okay, so we are going to be doing this. You must have heard of my deeds. I speak to you as one warrior to another. <sighs> okay. Well, <laughs> uh, I guess that's it, you know. I mean, that's the point. There are difficulties in attempting to persuade these guys. And let's, let's face it, we probably wouldn't have even been able to get this guy to join us for free. So I guess I will just attack him. I will just attack him and we will go for an auto resolve once again because no doubt we will be kind of uh, good. There you go. We only lost 10 units, which is not too bad. 
and we did gain 10,000 gold, which is great. So we'll just let him go because we might have an opportunity to persuade him in the future. Now let's just take a quick look here, see if there's anything here that I can potentially get. I'm only looking for cavalry at this point um, because cavalry for what I'm wanting them to do are basically the best. And obviously that is indeed field battles. Field battles are the main thing that I'm aiming for at the moment. And being victorious in those is extremely important. Aha, so there's Aldrich. He's running around with a massive army as well. 825 of them. And you know what I'm going to do? I think I might try to make peace with the Vlad... Should I make peace with the Vlandians? Hmm. Uh, not entirely sure about that at the moment. Let's actually just take a look. Ah, uh, Audric is actually the leader of that. Okay, yes, he's not going to be happy with anything, really. I'm going to try and take down Servic if I can. Actually, wait a minute. Hello. We've got a bunch of other people coming in here. Okay, let's have a look. Mantios is the leader of that. Lucand. I, th I think we've taken a look at Lucand, haven't we? Ospia, Ospia. Is Ospia around here? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. So I guess I will continue to chase after Servic at the moment. And if we can take him down, then I think we'll be in a great position. There we go. All right. Are we actually fighting... We're actually... What? We're fighting a Batanian and a Vlandian at the same time. O okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um, I, I mean, I could have left and uh, and things, but uh, you know what? I'm pretty happy to fight them fight them at the same time. Why not? Let's do it. Uh, let's have a, a fun fun time here. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, I probably want to put them into a wedge formation. There we go. Yeah, let's do a wedge formation and let's have a look at where they are. I, you know what? I've got full cavalry. We're gonna just charge them. We're just going to charge them and see what happens. I feel like we should have a pretty pretty good time. But bear in mind that obviously we've got to be a bit careful of their crossbowmen, careful of their spearmen, and they have a lot of those, as you can see. Look at all their hold. What the? What the, what the <laughs> uh, Byron, uh, just take a, take a, oh my, what, what, what's happened to his eyes? He is, he's, he's turned into a white walker or something. What, what, what crazy, craziness is this? I have no idea, but anyway, there you go. That's kind of hilarious. Uh, yeah, I said to myself, and I said to you, you know, I said, oh, we've got to be very careful of the pole arms. There's a lot of a lot of units that are using pole arms. But uh, did I listen? No, no, never in a million years, right? No, of course, I can't ever listen to myself. Bad advice, bad advice. But anyway, many, many kills will be done. And Oleron actually gained a level. Very nice indeed. We might very well be, uh, you know, taking control of him when uh, when and if Byron dies. Because he's he's taking a while, isn't he? He certainly is. It's not like I'm waiting for him to die, of course. I would much prefer him to stay alive, if at all possible. But there you go. All right, so is this guy actually the leader? No, Bothero. Bothero is the leader. So let's just release him, gain some relation. And uh, Servic. I'm not entirely sure what I should do with him because... We know, uh, wait a minute, we know that he is the leader of his clan, but he has always been extremely difficult for me to take prisoner, I actually, what should we say, for me to take as a vassal, and uh, yeah, so I guess we'll just leave him the way he is at the moment, and then we'll see if we can maybe persuade him in the future, because he currently has a negative relation with us, which I suppose might contribute to the fact that he's kind of difficult to uh, to get, or it might just be the standard Vlandian stubbornness that they generally tend to have quite a bit of. But anyway, let's take a look at this guy. No, Theus. Theus is the... Uh, oh, there he is. There's Theus. Do you think I can potentially persuade him? Probably not. I mean, I've got 132 uh, people, and I probably wouldn't be able to persuade him. Uh, let's see if we can make peace. He's, wow, he's willing to make peace for one Dina. Do you think we should make peace and then focus on the Batanians? Or should we just, oh, we could focus on, you know what? I think we're, what we're going to do is we're going to try and focus on the Vlandians. And I will try to make peace with the Batanians. Oh, hello there. 
Please don't go into that. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to wait a little bit. Oh, yeah. It seems like, look at that. Karath was actually taken prisoner by Nikasaur right there. So we're going to have to do something about that. I mean, obviously, we can't really release him or anything like that. There's not that many controls over where prisoners go and things like that at the moment. Ooh, there we go. There's someone that I can speak to. Yes. Batanians? Okay, yes, very good. Now, I'm trying to pick on someone that has a smallish army so that they might be more inclined to make peace with us. As you can see, boom, one dinar. He's happy to make peace with us. Do you think he's going to give me... He's going to give me all his money too? That's actually kind of hilarious. Okay, I guess we'll just take that. And there you go. A peace offering has been made. And um, now we can pretty much just focus on the Vlandians. They have a pretty large army in our territory, but obviously the Batanians had a larger army, so that's you know lesser evil, I suppose. And otherwise, we'll have to deal with the Vlandians in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Thank you.